mystery as any version of Batman. Um, doing Superman, doing Batman, doing Wonder Woman, that's the sort of thing you do. You say, I need to do this series in a way that is respectful of the legend, but it does not have to hew to every single detail because they keep blowing up the history and starting over. Right. Um, but still, I view the Marvel Universe or the DC Universe as sort of this big complex structure that people have built. And I'd like to add, you know, a new wing to it or a new room here or a new tower um, and do something that could be a lasting addition. Right. Um, not just recapitulating what's been gone before, not just kind of wandering through the, the halls of the structure and saying, ah, let's have a pleasant time touring this, but bring in something new, add, add something that, that builds out of what, what's already there and enhances it. Hi, I'm Steve Jeppy, and you're watching Fantastic Forum. You have got to see this. A devoted fan of Star Trek from Great Britain has created his very own starship in his apartment. Tony Allen spent 10 years making the renovations and as you can see, they are spectacular. He even has a transporter room. The windows have inserts that make them appear to view out into space and there is a voice-activated computer system that turns on lights and consoles. Apparently, a friend gave Tony a Star Trek magazine, and he became obsessed with having his own starship. He'd split up with his wife and used the work as a kind of therapy. He did all the work himself and spent about 4,000 pounds, roughly 8,000 US dollars. Now, there's just one catch. His wife has been paying the mortgage since they split up, and now she wants to sell and she doesn't want to sell the USS Voyager. Wife Georgina insists that the one-bedroom flat in Hinkley, Leicestershire, be placed on the market as a conventional property. That means that all Tony's work has to be dismantled. And as you might very well imagine, Tony is devastated. And I have to admit that I am too. If there was ever a situation in which it was cheaper to keep her, this is it. Good luck to you, Tony, or as the Klingons say, Kopla. to today's discussion and today's discussion topic is animated series or cartoons that are based on comic book characters. Mm -hmm. So we've been talking about continuity. You know, these animated series over the years have also been very influential on comic books. They've been yes. inspired mm -hmm. by comic books, but some of the elements of these series have made their way. And like uh, Abby, you mentioned Har Harley Quinn. And that's a good example of a character. And I think actually there were quite a few others on Batman the Animated Series that were created for that series and then crept their way into the comics. Mm -hmm. So um, in what other ways, I guess maybe you think of Batman Beyond too, that continuity yes. has been yeah. accepted into the regular Batman comics. Mm -hmm. What other shows have had an influence on the comic books? Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles basically, uh, I would dare to say that the cartoon is more important, and I know this is blasphemy for some people, than the comic book. I think the um, continuity that was established in the cartoon was so good that forget about the comic book. Shredder was a secondary character, not that important in the comic book, and he became the antagonist for crying out loud. What do you think? Well, I mean, I think it depends a lot on when you sort of come into the thing. Like, the, the 90s Batman was basically my big introduction introduction to superheroes, right? So to me, that's <laughs> always kind of been the canon. Mm -hmm. And then there are all these nice comic books. Look, they're about that character who was on the cartoon. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it nice that they did that? But, you know, I mean, I think in terms of influence, the cartoons tend to reach a lot more people and a yes. very different audience. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like a little kid will come in and want to see you know, Batman comics. Most of the Batman comics are not for the kids oh. who watch the cartoons. So it really depends on what you're looking for and how much of a comic you're willing, or how much you're willing to pull back in order to make a comic accessible. Actually, I, I'm using Batman as an example, but it's not necessarily a 